people. We the people. We the people. We the people of the United States. In order to form a more perfect union. Establish justice. Ensure domestic tranquility. Provide for the common defense. Promote the general welfare. To secure the blessings of liberty. To ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain. And establish this Constitution. For the United States of America. probably heard the preamble to the U.S. Constitution before. You might even be able to recite it from memory, but it's only the beginning, an intro to an amazing and historic document that took almost five months to create. Signed on September 17, 1787, it has served our country well for more than 200 years. In fact, it's the world's oldest written constitution that officials still follow. It has endured through wars and other major crises throughout our history. It is still the law of the land. The law that controls the power of every official who creates, judges, or enforces the law in the U.S. But it's also the very same law that guarantees you and me, we the people, all of the rights and liberties we enjoy as Americans. But what makes our Constitution so cool? Why is it the envy of many other democracies all around the world? Well, maybe it was the unique way the Founding Fathers framed it, so that it would divide the power of government between a national center and all the states, and the national power would be split among these three separate but equal branches of government, the Congress, the Office of the President, and the Courts. Nice work, guys. Let's talk legislative first. Legislators write and pass laws, or legislation. In the House of Representatives are 435 members who each represent a single district in their home state. Over on the other side, there are 100 senators, two from each of the 50 states. Put them all together and they form Congress. They write and pass bills and resolutions, which go to the president who will sign them into law, or, or not. Those that become law are called statutes. Remember, everything Congress does must be allowed by the Constitution. The president heads up the executive branch and carries out the laws by directing federal agencies and departments to use federal money to do important things on behalf of all Americans. Things like defending our nation, creating and improving parks, or paying our veterans for their service, among other things. Everything the president or any government employee working in the executive branch does also must be done according to, you guessed it, the Constitution. Meanwhile, over in the judicial branch, the United States courts hear cases that involve federal laws made by the legislative branch. That means our federal courts often determine what the Constitution really means when a certain action or law is in dispute. Sometimes those cases end up in this place. The U.S. Supreme Court, the highest court in the land. They can rule whether that law or action is constitutional or unconstitutional. There you have it, the three branches of government created in our Constitution. They create a separation of powers that ensures that no single person or part of the government has too much power. The Constitution is pretty amazing. It's been through some changes since 1787, amended 27 times in all. The first 10 are called the Bill of Rights, which guarantees us all certain freedoms. The First Amendment is the most famous and protects rights like free speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press. Newer amendments include equal protection under the law, among others. It's the sworn duty of our nation's leaders in every branch of government to work with and faithfully follow the Constitution each and every day. Here are a few of those leaders to tell you what and how much the U.S. Constitution means to them. Hi, I'm Texas Senator John Cornyn, a proud St. Mary's School of Law alumnus. One of the unique features of our Constitution is there is no one most important part. But one amendment in particular does stand out to me and that comes in part from my having served at the county, state, and federal level of our government, and that would be the 10th Amendment. 
The authors of our Constitution had serious concerns about a central government becoming too powerful, and the Tenth Amendment is a check to ensure that wouldn't happen in our new nation. In a country as large and diverse as ours, not all decisions can or should be made in Washington, D.C. The Tenth Amendment ensures that our states have the freedom and flexibility to be the laboratories of democracy that keep us moving forward. I'm Paul Green. I'm the senior justice on the Supreme Court of Texas, and we are in a courtroom. And I can't think of a more appropriate place than to talk about the Constitution of the United States of America. The part of the Constitution I think I like the best is the third article, Article 3, which establishes the judiciary. And the purpose of that is to create checks and balances one against the other. So if the executive or the congressional branches exceed the bounds of the Constitution, the judicial branch is there to regulate that conduct. We want to make sure that the Congress and the, and the executive stay within the bounds of what the Constitution says that they can do. That's why I think that the Article 3 is my favorite part of the Constitution. Hi, I'm Joaquin Gostel, Congressman from San Antonio. One of my favorite parts of the Constitution is the 14th Amendment, and specifically within the 14th Amendment, the Equal Protection Clause. You see, in the 1960s in San Antonio, there were a group of parents from the West Side who bound together to challenge the way that our schools are funded. Back then, and for many decades after that, our schools were mostly funded based on property taxes. And so in wealthier areas with expensive commercial real estate and residential real estate, schools received a lot more money than in areas which were much poorer which didn't have expensive homes or buildings. The group of parents got together and said, we don't believe that's right. They argued that education was a fundamental right and challenged the school finance system under what is known as the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. And so in 1973, the United States Supreme Court came down with a decision known as SAISD versus Rodriguez. The court said that education is not a fundamental right. And they also said that this wasn't a violation of the Equal Protection Clause. You might wonder why I cite that case, a losing case, as one of my favorite. Well, the reason is that after that, in almost every state, parents got together and challenged under the state constitution the same principle. And in the late 1980s in Texas, for example, the Texas Supreme Court essentially said that education is a fundamental right. And because of that, we have a very different school finance system now than we did in the 1960s. Hello, my name is Mary Ann Bramblett. Well, the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution gave women the right to vote. And I realize now that it not only gave women the right to vote, but it gave women the right to hold public office. So I, in fact, owe my career as a judge to the 19th Amendment. Now, prior to that, women could not attend college, could not hold public office, could not serve on juries, they couldn't even testify in court. In 1848, the movement started and there were many activists and organizations. Susan B. Anthony is one of the most famous. And their purpose was to raise awareness and to lobby the, the government. So after a 70 year battle in 1919, the United States voted to approve the amendment to give women the right to vote but it doesn't become the law of the land just because the federal government approved it. Three-fourths of the states in the United States had to approve that amendment. In August of 1920, that last state that was needed to pass the law did in fact vote. It is now the law of the land. However, the struggle still continues for gender equality. Women are still fighting for equal pay and equal opportunity. And when this is achieved, our nation, the United States, will be much stronger. Well, hopefully you understand why our Constitution is so special and why many other countries wish they had one just like it. No wonder it has its own special day. It's a reminder for each and every one of us to understand it as best we can. After all, we're the ones who make it work. You? And me. We the people. 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 This video was created by the St. Mary's University School of Law. The Law School of San Antonio, Texas. 
St. Mary's is proud of the public service of its graduates, students, and faculty, and its more than 500 living alumni who hold elected or judicial positions, a legacy that has protected the U.S. Constitution since 1927. St. Mary's would like to give special thanks to those who appeared in this video.